WGSR 47.1. Digital. Digital. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Word from the Lord. James over here with you. Coming on a little early tonight. We'll be here for two hours, so I uh, hope you have your pen and paper, paper ready. Jot down some notes. Study God's Word with us. We want to encourage you to open your Bible. Examine the Scriptures with us because we believe that uh, the, uh, the way to improve your lives and improve yourself, improve your country, is by opening God's Word and studying it. So we want to encourage you to do that very thing. If you want to meet with us, uh, we're meeting at 250 The Boulevard in, uh, there in Eden. And uh, you can reach me at 276-340-2653 or 336-394-5721 or wordfromlord.gmail.com. So we hope that you uh, will uh, take the time to come in and visit with us. As always, any of our uh, literature or DVDs or books that we, that we have, tracks, uh, all this is free if, you, if we can... Uh, 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 give you a lesson of something that we've done, uh, maybe something you want to study again, take advantage of uh, the, the fact that we're giving these away, please give us a call. Let us, let us uh, be of service to you. We'd be glad to do that very thing. So if you're in Eden, here's where you can meet with the Church of Christ. If you're in Danville and or Martinsville, here's where you can meet with the saints there, 823 Starling Avenue, Martinsville, Virginia, 120 American Legion, Danville. Uh, Mark and Micah are in uh, uh, Danville. Uh, Johnny is in uh, uh, Martinsville. There's a, a number of brethren in either of these uh, towns that would be glad to talk with you about the Bible. If you find a member of the church uh, that in, in these areas where these folks are, are, are assembling, they'll be glad to discuss the Bible with you. So please, if you're in the area, uh, take advantage of that. We want to also remind you of the upcoming tent meetings. Now we are uh, setting up a tent meeting, and uh, it's going to be the one in Danville is, uh, I, I don't know why the dates aren't up there. Uh, I thought I had the dates up there, but Danville Tent Meeting is going to be June 21st, June the 21st through July the 3rd. June 21st through July the 3rd, that's going to be in Danville. I think they're still uh, waiting for a, a location. Uh, we're still working on that, the best of my, my knowledge. And uh, so there it is, just wasn't uh, showing up there. There we go. And uh, so we hope that you'll make plans to uh, attend that July, June 21st through July the 2nd. Uh, there in Danville, be somewhere in Danville, easy location, easy to find, I'm sure. And I uh, certainly want, uh, want to invite you out and be prepared for that. So clear off your calendar and, uh, and come out to the tent. Bring your questions, bring your pastor, bring your friends, bring your neighbors, bring your Bible. Uh, come on out and hear the, the, the gospel be preached. Also, then immediately following that, or following that, we'll have a few days rest. We're going to put another tent up in Eden, uh, July 7th through the 16th is what we're shooting for. And uh, we're still looking at a location there, but nonetheless, we want to invite you out to, to the tent. And again, bring your questions, your Bible, your preacher, your friends, your neighbors. Uh, just come and, and prepare to uh, hear the Word of God be preached. And if you have any questions about anything that was said or... <clears throat> any way we can assist you in any way, we'll be glad to, to do that very thing. So uh, remember these dates. Just plan on June uh, uh, 21st through July the 16th. You'll be able to find uh, gospel preaching under the tent in your area uh, somewhere near you. So especially if you're in uh, the Danville area, be looking for the one in Danville. And if you're in the uh, Eden, look for the one. Uh, the tent's going to be set up there in, in Eden. Uh, we uh, had the tent set up in Eden a couple of years ago and found that it was a very nice location for anybody coming from Reedsville, Danville, Martinsville, or Madison, Mayadan, or in the surrounding area. So uh, north, south, east, or west, you can come to the tent and uh, uh, know that you're going to hear God's word proclaimed. So we hope that you will, will, will do that. So come out to the tent and uh, let, us, let us be of service to you. This is going to be, the one in Eden is going to be sponsored by the, the uh, Church of Christ that's meeting there at 250 the Boulevard. The one in Danville is going to be put on by the, the, the brethren who are over at 120 American Legion. So if you have info, more, if you need more information about that, you can call uh, Micah Robertson or Mark McMinnis, and uh, they'll certainly uh, uh, give you some information and, and help you uh, uh, with any questions you have. I need to remember to turn my phone down because somebody always calls, 
and I'm usually not on at this time, so they're uh, more likely to call. So, okay. Well, tonight, friends, what I want to do is I want to discuss a very important topic to you because when it comes to rightly dividing the word of truth, we need to always make sure that we are giving the proper examination to the Bible. Now, in the Church of Christ, we don't fear being examined. We don't, we don't fear being scrutinized. If we did, we wouldn't be on a television in this format. We might be on television and not take phone calls or not uh, ask you to come by and visit with us or not uh, say, uh, uh, take our DVDs and watch them again. We wouldn't say that if we were afraid of being examined. But we know that giving, uh, being examined is part of it. It's part of the territory that comes with, uh, with preaching. In Acts 17, Acts 17 and verse 11, <clears throat> excuse me, you'll recall that the Bereans were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. They were challenging uh, apostles, or they were they were examining what apostles were teaching. Well, we don't have any fear about being examined. We want you to examine. We encourage you to examine, and it's because we know that the gospel that we preach can withstand scrutiny. It can withstand scrutiny. So, if you are watching our program, you know that you're more than welcome to examine what we see and uh, say and see if. It conflicts with the Bible in another area. That's what we're talking about. See if the word or the scripture is broken when we preach it. John 10, 35. Jesus said the scripture cannot be broken. And so we want you to do that very thing. So we know that giving an answer, if you're going to be examined, then you're going to have to give an answer for some things that you say or what you preach. 1 Peter 3, 15. You hear us refer to this all the time. Be ready always to give an answer. To every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that's within you with meekness and fear. So we want to be ready to give an answer if you ask us a question. Now, uh, sometimes when we uh, give uh, an answer or when we are examined, sometimes people make uh, statements about us that, that aren't true because they haven't examined what we teach nor what the Bible teaches. And so they'll make these statements like this. A man said that I preached another gospel. We went to one of the church services there in Eden. Uh, it was the Grace Baptist Church, and the preacher, Mr. Calvin Adams, said that I preached another gospel. I want to let you listen to and hear him say it for himself. This is what he said uh, uh, regarding what I preach. Got audio? Welcome to come here, but you know, we're not, you know, you got your tape play going now. But, uh, we, yeah, uh, I do. I know you do. <laughs> uh, but you're not welcome <laughs> to come I'm here and, and preach. So, I, I'm not preaching. No. I just couldn't ask questions. You are welcome to leave right now. Well, I just can't ask questions. That's all. You I, know, I know you don't like to ask questions. Well, you are. Uh, are you preaching another gospel? And, well, why and don't the you Bible says, why don't you have me show what the gospel is that I'm preaching wrong. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, I and he was that. buried and rose again the third day. I preach that. And you preach if, if you're not a member of the uh, Church of Christ, you are you are you are not a not to be saved. I've heard you. Well, what do and, you? And, well, let me ask you this: Do you believe you have to be a member of the Baptist Church to be saved? No. So why are you in it? Why, I, why a, would you I, be in a I, church that you don't have to be a part I of? I trust in Jesus Christ. And, uh, and you preach another gospel, and you're not welcome to come here and preach that message here. I'm not not to my evangelists, I'm not, not to preaching. my members. You came here. You think I don't? I, I didn't I know did. you. You yeah, talked about having a cowboy I hat knew, on. I knew you knew how to play uh, this in length later on. But you heard him say, he said twice there in the, in the time we played that I preach another gospel. I preach another gospel. I'm not welcome to come there and preach this different gospel uh, that's different than what he preaches. Well, number one, I wasn't trying to preach. I sat there through the preaching, uh, and I, I simply was asking questions. I wasn't trying to preach. But now he's welcome to come down to where we meet. He's welcome to come down to 250 the Boulevard 
And he's welcome to preach if we can ask him questions. See? If he will, if he will let us do what we try to do to him, then we'll gladly let him preach. See? Because we don't have anything to fear about uh, uh, when someone comes in and preaches because we can give an answer and we know that the doctrine that we preach can be scrutinized. But he is afraid of the questions. Well, if you want to say I preach another gospel, then let me just give you my answer. If you want to ask me a question about what I preach, let me give you my answer. Paul said, my answer to them that do examine me is this. So he gave an answer. Paul was ready to give an answer. So let's see what our answer, what my answer will be to Mr. Adams who says, I preach another gospel. All right? First of all, I have an obligation to contend and defend. The Bible says that we are to contend earnestly for the faith once delivered. Now Jude, Jude 3, Jude 3, here's what, uh, here's what Jude says. He says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. All right? Earnestly contend for the faith. That's vigorously fight for the faith. Well, that is not my obligation. My obligation is to contend and to defend. In Philippians, uh, Philippians 1 and verse uh, 17, here's what Paul says, that he is set for the defense of the gospel. He was set to defend. So contend and defend. What Paul did is what we're trying to do. What, what Jude said we should do is what we're trying to do, contend and defend. And so if that means giving an answer or being questioned, being scrutinized, the gospel that we preach, the gospel that we preach uh, is, not, uh, is not afraid. It has nothing to worry about. So we're glad to do that. And the question is, the question is, will Mr. Uh, uh, Adams, will he allow his gospel, the gospel that he preaches, that he says is the true gospel, will he allow it to be examined? Will he give an answer about what he preaches? Now, we're going we're gonna to play you about three minutes of what he says, and it's obvious that he won't. Now, you may recall this is the same man that on one occasion we asked if he or any of his members wanted to come down and study the Bible with us, and he said if any of his members were down there, he'd shoot them. So that's the kind of man you're dealing with. He won't contend, but he will certainly shoot or he'll pull out the gun. He won't pull out the gospel gun, but he'll pull out his gun. So let's contend and defend. Well, let's start with this. If I'm preaching another gospel, let me just ask you what is the faith of Christ or what is the gospel of Christ? Notice, if you will, in Galatians 2 and verse 16. Galatians 2 verse 16. If you have your Bibles... I encourage you to turn along. We'll do a little finger exercise. But I want to put this up just in case someone uh, doesn't have their Bible or doesn't have a Bible or simply wants to read it from the screen. That's fine. Here's what Paul says in Galatians 2.16. He says, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Now notice the contrast here. Paul is comparing the works of the law by the faith of, of Jesus Christ. He's comparing an old system to a new system. He's comparing the law to the faith. He says, even we have, uh, have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no, no flesh be justified. So we're talking about the faith of Christ. Well, what is it? What is it that justifies or what is the faith of Christ? Let's notice something. Let's notice this. The gospel is pictured in the Bible as being the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Now, you may have heard uh, Mr. Adams say that, that I preached a different gospel. When I asked him what gospel it was that I preached that was, that was so uh, uh, erroneous, uh, here's what he said. Let's listen to the first little part again. So, what do you think, Joe? You, want, you got a few minutes to down and Well, I, I think and you ought to talk to this fellow no, right here. No, we, these fellows preach another gospel. And, okay. Uh, that's, fine. Well, that's, wanna, that's, that's why we want to ask some questions. No, we're not. Uh, that's good with me. You folks are welcome to come here as long as you 
Well, you, you ought to be respectful and stand up and sing when we sing. But you're well, welcome to come here, but you know, we're not. You know, you got your take play going now, but uh, we, yeah, uh, I do. I know you do. <laughs> Uh, but you're not welcome to come <laughs> here and, and preach. So, I, I'm not preaching. No. I'm just going to ask questions. You are welcome to leave right now. Well, I just came to ask questions. That's all. You I, know, I know you don't like to ask questions. Well, you are. Okay. But you're preaching another gospel. And, well, why and don't you, Bible says, why don't you have me show what the gospel is that I'm preaching wrong? Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. I and he was that. buried and rose again the third day. I preach that. And you preach if... If you're not a member of the uh, Church of Christ, you're you are you are not uh, a not saved. I've heard you. Well, what do you? All right, now I preach another gospel. I ask him, well, what gospel was? What gospel should I preach? And his response was, the death that Christ was buried, or that he was crucified. Let's just get let's just get it up here. First Corinthians, chapter fifteen. He says, this is the gospel that I should be preaching. That, that uh, Christ, let's see here, verse 3, Christ uh, died for our sins according to Scripture. I preach that. I preach that. And that he was buried and rose again on the third day according to the Scriptures. I preach that. His death, burial, and resurrection. I preach the very thing that Mr. Uh, Adams says I don't preach. Now, my question is, where is the difference in the gospel? The difference... In the Gospels, according to uh, that, uh, that I preach, compared to the one that Mr. Adams preaches, is then what else is there? See, I don't know many people in uh, so-called Christianity who don't believe that Jesus Christ was dead, buried, and resurrected. I think they'd preach that all, all week long. But what it comes down to, there's some other things that Mr. Adams wants to condemn me of as far as putting in the gospel and saying they don't belong there. Well, let's just see. Let's just find out what is in the gospel. Let's find out what is the faith. I think what you're going to find is you're going to find the faith in the gospel are used synonymously, and therefore if it's in the gospel, it's going to be in the faith. If it's in the faith, it's going to be in the gospel. And if I preach a different gospel, then I'm going to preach a different faith. So let's just see what is the gospel that I preach or that I should preach and let's find out what the gospel is that Mr. Adams should preach and you be the judge of who's preaching the different gospel. Okay? Let's notice something. First about the, the gospel or the faith. In Acts 6 and verse 7, the Bible says, And the word of God increased and the number of disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. And a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. Now, to what were the priests obedient? Well, they were obedient to the faith. They were obedient to the faith. But stop and ask yourself. Let's just use a little common sense. I know that's hard, people in religion. You know, when it comes to the Bible and love, people just throw common sense out the window. But let's, you know, let's try to use the common sense that God gave us. What was it? that the priests were obedient to. They were obedient to the faith. Well, what was the faith? Well, just back right up to the beginning of the verse. What had they heard? See, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you're going to obey something, if you're going to obey something, then you have to hear something. They heard the word of God. They heard the word of God and were obedient to the faith. Now, it stands to reason that if they heard the word of God, they would also be obedient to the word of God. They wouldn't hear the word of God and be obedient to something that was different than the word of God. So they were obedient to the faith, the system of faith. They were obedient to the words they heard. Now watch this. Watch this in Acts 14 and verse 22. Acts 14 and verse 22, listen to what uh, we find in the Bible that Paul and Barnabas went through confirming the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith. Now, how are they going to continue in the faith? Is that, is that something personal, a personal belief? Or is it something else? You know what? It must be something else because look at this. So were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. Now, wait a minute. If they're established in the faith, if that brings an increase in number, 
then I know what the faith is, or I have a really good idea about what the faith is. Why? Because I just read a verse where people heard the word of God and the, and the number of disciples increased or were multiplied. So when the faith was increased or when the word of God was increased, then the number of disciples increased. They were obedient to the faith. They had been uh, established in the faith and the numbers increased. See, the faith is the gospel that was being preached to them. It's what they heard. That's what they were continuing in. That's what they were continuing in. It was the gospel. Look at this. In John 8 and verse 31, John 8, verse 31, Jesus says, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Now let's think again for a moment. You have to continue in the word. That's right. Continue in the word. But that's not what, that's not what uh, the book of Acts says. The book of, book of Acts doesn't say they continued in the word, does it? It says they continued in the faith. Unless the faith is the word. The faith is the gospel that they heard preached. They continued in it. And that's exactly what the New Testament disciples did. Notice again in Acts Acts chapter 2 and verse 42, the Bible says, and they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. So it is a system. It is a system that they've been taught. It is a set of rules. It's the faith. It's the gospel that they were taught. Notice again. Notice again. We're simply going through the Bible, friends. We're simply looking at the Bible. We're rightly dividing it. We're letting the Bible be its own best commentary. And we're making sure that what the Bible says in one place does not contradict itself in another place. So notice this. In Acts 13, verses 7 and 8, Acts 13, verse 7 and 8, here comes, here comes Saul, here comes Paul through, and he's passing through, he's going on his preaching journey, and he was, he came to a, a, a country, and he found a man there, all right? Sergius Paulus, all right? a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. All right, now Sergius Paulus was running with a guy, a, a guy who is a sorcerer, Elimaeus. And notice this, Sergius Paulus wanted to hear the word of God. Wanted to hear the word of God. But Elimaeus, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood him, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Now, why would he be worried about turning him away from the faith if, after all, all he was hearing was the word of God? See, friends, you are obedient to the faith when you hear the word of God. When the word of God is preached, the faith is preached. The faith is preached. So the word of God is the same as the faith. The gospel is the same as the faith. It is a system. It is a system of belief that, that everyone must submit to. Now, when Mr. Adams says that I preach another gospel, he's basically he's saying that I'm preaching something that's different from the word of God. I'm different from the word of God. That's what he says. That's what he's accusing me of. Well, I'm giving my answer. My answer, number one, is... I want to find out what the Word of God is. I want to find out what's in the faith. I want to find out what is in the apostles' doctrine so that when I preach it, I can go back and say, no, this is the gospel that I preach because I got it right from the apostles', uh, apostles mouth. I got it right from their, uh, their lips. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I, I want to... I want to defend what I preach by saying, here's book, chapter, and verse. Now, see, Paul did the very thing. Paul certified, Paul certified that, uh, that the gospel he preached, that the gospel he preached was, was from uh, men. Galatians 1 and verse 11, let's notice this. I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which is preached of me is not from man. 
he was certifying that what he preached was indeed the word of God. We want to do the same thing. All right, I'm going to take this call. I think that's the call we're looking for. And uh, you're on the word from the Lord. Yes, James. Uh, we have uh, a gentleman here in the Dominican Republic. Could yeah. you take a call from him and let him see that he's uh, speaking live all the way to the states on this program? Oh, yes. All right, hold on. This is from the Dominican Republic. Yes, hello, brother. Hello. Welcome to the program. Robert. Okay, I'm coming from the Dominican Republic. Good to hear you. Yeah, uh, so uh, the, I'm looking at the program. It's very, very, very interesting. Now I am with uh, Dan Robertson. Yeah, from the Dominican Republic. Okay. One hour. Yeah, it happened. So I'm very, very, very happy about the program. It's very, very. Well, we're glad that you're watching and glad you're able to hear what we're doing all the way up here in North Carolina, USA, all the way down in, into the Dominican Republic. And uh, I hope you're taking care of our. Uh, brethren who are down there with you. Yeah, the Church of Christ have the same world wherever you go. I'm so happy about it. Right, amen. Amen. Okay. Thank you very much, brother. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you for your call. It was, it was good to hear your voice. God bless you. I hope to meet, I'd like to meet you someday. God bless you. All right, brother. Now, now, folks, that was from the Dominican Republic. It just shows that when you preach the same gospel everywhere you go, no matter, no matter what nation, what state, what uh, uh, nationality you are, the same gospel, the gospel that you hear us, will, be, will produce Christians no matter where you are. Uh, okay. I didn't know if uh, Johnny was going to be back on the line or not. But nonetheless, you see, friends, this is the power of it. We certify the gospel that we preach is not after man. It is indeed the word of God. It is indeed the word of God. And uh, uh, two of our brethren, Johnny and, and another brother, is, um, are down in the Dominican Republic right now. They're having Bible studies. I know they've had uh, uh, several Bible studies while they've been down there. And I'm sure they'll give you a report when they come back. But it just shows, friends, that we are so convinced that the gospel that we preach is certified from God, that it is the faith, that it is the apostles' doctrine, that it don't have to, we don't worry about it being scrutinized. Now, why is, it, why is it that someone would then accuse me of preaching another gospel and then not want his gospel scrutinized? That's, that's what's, what, what questions me. Now, look at this. Let's continue some more. In Acts 8 and verse 25. Now in Acts 8, if you're a Bible student, you know what's going on in Acts chapter 8. Philip has gone down and he's preached in Samaria and he has taught some individuals the gospel and he's called for Peter and John, the apostles, to come down and lay hands on these people so that they can have the Holy Spirit. Now again, for all you folks, not trying to get off on the rabbit trail, but for all you people who say you get the Holy Spirit today, the people in the first century had to have apostles come and lay hands on them in order to receive it. But uh, let's digress a little bit. You just, that's just a little side note. That's just a little uh, uh, icing on the cake, something you think about. But notice what happens when they went back. And they, when they had testified and preached the word of God, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. So, they came down through Samaria, and when they went back to Jerusalem, they were preaching the gospel. Now, they preached the word of the Lord. They preached the word of the Lord when they arrived, and on their way back, they preached the gospel. Now, did they preach two different things? Were they preaching two different things? I hear people all the time say, well, Peter preached the gospel, and Paul preached the gospel. That's a lie. That's the devil's lie, friend. There's only one gospel one faith and that is what they preach that's why friends that's why Paul says in Ephesians 
Ephesians uh, chapter 4 and verse 4. Notice this. He says, There is one body, one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith. Now, if there's only one faith, why wouldn't, why would uh, someone come along and say, well, Peter and Paul preach something different? And if there was more than one faith, more than one gospel, because we know they're used interchangeably, then why wouldn't Paul say, well, there's only one faith for the Gentiles and one faith for the Jews? Or why didn't he say there's two faiths? I'll tell you why, friends, because there's only one. There's only one faith. And that is the word of God. It is the gospel. So when someone says, well, you preach another gospel, they're saying you're preaching another word. When they say you're preaching another gospel, they're saying you're preaching a different faith. Well, I might have to give Mr. Adams that. I am definitely preaching a different faith than what he's preaching. The only difference is the faith that I preach, I can find in the Bible. And we're going to examine his faith in just a moment. We're going to examine what he preaches. We're going to examine his gospel momentarily. But just notice, friends, again, the scripture cannot be broken. The word and the gospel are the same. They're the same. In Ephesians 1, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, notice this. Paul says, In whom ye also trusted, that after ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, now, that's, that didn't get much plainer than that. The word of truth is the gospel of salvation, in whom also, uh, after that ye believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. They heard the word of the truth, the gospel of their salvation. What is, what is it that saves? It's the word of God. Romans 1 and verse 16, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to all that believe, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. He didn't say there's two words of God. He said the word of God, the gospel. It is the gospel of your salvation. It is the word of truth. My friends, it's just ungetoverable. The gospel, the faith, the apostles' doctrine, the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, they're all referring to the same thing. So if someone says that, well, you're preaching another gospel, you're preaching something different, then let's just see if it lines up with what we know is in the gospel. Let's see if, it's, if it lines up with the gospel for sure. All right? <clears throat> Notice this. The faith and the gospel are all the same. They stand for the whole teachings of Christ, whether it be through his words, his direct words, his direct teaching, or whether it be through the New Testament writers. And he said, well, James, how do you know that? How, how can you tell that it's the same whether he spoke it or whether the apostle spoke it or the inspired writer spoke it? I've heard a lot of people say, well, I only go by what's in red. I only go by what's in red. Well, you know what, friends, in my Bible, in my Bible, when I read what Jesus said, it's not in red. It's all in black and white. Because my Bible doesn't have, it's not a red letter edition. But Jesus' words are still here. But if you, say, if you only follow what Jesus said, then what do you do with the rest of the Bible? What do you do for the rest of the Bible? Is that just nighttime reading? What's it for? Why don't you just tear it out then if you only use the words of Jesus? See, Jesus gave his words to the, uh, to the apostles and to the other inspired men. Look at this in John chapter 17. John 17 and verse uh, uh, 11. He says, and now he's praying to the Father. He says, and now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep through thy own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those... That thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, uh, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and these things speak I in the world, that they might have in my joy fulfilled themselves. I have given them thy word, 
And the world hath hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou shouldest keep them from the evil. He gave them the word that the Father gave him. Now, friends, that's why we say that Christ, Christ is still teaching today through the apostles or inspired writers or through his word. You can say this is Christ. This is Christ teaching. Now, if I'm preaching another gospel, if I'm preaching another gospel, then what is it that I'm preaching? If I'm preaching another gospel, then what I am preaching, you won't be able to find it in the gospel. You won't be able to find it in this book that we know is the Word of God, the faith, the apostles' doctrine, the gospel of your salvation, the Word of truth. You won't be able to find it in there if I'm preaching something different. Now again, the preacher who accused me of preaching another gospel is the preacher from the Grace Baptist Church in Eden. His name is J. Calvin Adams. And again, he said if any of his members came down and studied the Bible with us, he'd shoot them. You know, there's something about these, these Baptist preachers that like to pull guns, isn't it? I believe, I believe a man called on, uh, on the program one time, and Micah and I were there, and he said that uh, Micah and Mark were lucky that the preacher didn't shoot them. I don't know why these people are so violent when it comes to defending what they preach or when they're asked questions, but, oh, well, you just take that for what it's worth, friends. But if I'm preaching another gospel, then it must be that you can find something that I'm preaching that's not in the gospel. It must be that you can find that. Now, let's just notice something. Let's just, let's just notice something right quick. He's the preacher for the Grace Baptist Church. Now, we've already talked about the word of truth, the gospel, the faith, all being interchangeable. But look at this. Look at these other verses. In Acts 14, verse 3. Acts 14, verse 3. The Bible records, Long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace. The word of his grace. Now you see another description of the gospel. The word of his grace. Acts 20, verse 32. Paul speaking to the Elders from, my, uh, from Ephesus, when they met him at Miletus, here's what he says. He says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. Now, I seem to recall a verse we read back in Acts 14, verse 22, that says they were establishing the disciples in the word. They were establishing them in the the faith. Well, that same faith is called the word of his grace. Now, I find it very interesting that the Grace Baptist Church, the preacher, or the pastor, they call him, of the Grace Baptist Church is accusing me of preaching another gospel that is different from the word of his grace. Different from the word of his grace. But, let me tell you, friends, Grace, grace is what you find in God's word. Grace is what the gospel calls you unto. Galatians 1 and verse 6, Paul says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Now, who is actually preaching another gospel? Who is actually preaching another gospel that's different from the word of grace? Can you find the Grace Baptist Church in the Bible? Can you find where Paul said, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel? Now why didn't Paul say, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the Grace Baptist Church to another gospel. I say the gospel that has in it the Grace Baptist Church or any Baptist Church for that matter or the Presbyterian Church or the Lutheran Church 
or the Episcopalian church, or the Catholic church, or the Mormon church, or the Seventh-day Adventist church, or whatever. That's another gospel. Because God does not call people into the grace of Christ by this, uh, 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 excuse me, he doesn't call people into the grace of Christ by a gospel that has any of these man-made churches in it. He calls people into the grace of Christ with a gospel that talks about the church that Christ built. Now, listen again. Listen again to what Mr. Adam says. Listen again to what Mr. Adam says. Let's see if we can go back here. This is very difficult. How do you start again? How do you stop? There it is. Control P, maybe. So, what do you think, Joe? You, want, you got a few minutes to down? And well, I, I think you ought to talk to this fellow no, right here. No, we, these fellows preach another gospel. Man. Okay, let me set this up for you, friends. This gentleman right here is named Joel... Uh, Ward, I believe was his name, and he was the visiting preacher. They were having a three-day meeting. Uh, he was the visiting preacher, and one of our members was driving by Sunday afternoon and saw somebody in the parking lot. He pulls in, asks about the meeting, and the gentleman that is in the parking lot hands him a flyer and says, yeah, says, why don't you come? Why don't you come to the meeting? Well, you know who it was? It was the preacher. It was this man right here. Invited, invited us to come back to the meeting. All right? So I asked Joel, I said, well, would you like to, would you care to answer some questions after the service? Give you time to say your howdies and thank yous and handshaking and all that good stuff. And, you know, we're not going to be disruptive. We'll give you time. We'll sit back. And so we did. We didn't make any disruptions. We weren't disruptive at all, contrary to popular beliefs or rumors that you hear. And so here he was. He said, well, you know, we'll think about it. So that, that, that's who this is, all right? Okay. Uh, what what I, I, that's, that's why we want to ask some questions. No, we're not. Uh, that's good with me. You folks are welcome to come here as long as you... Well, you, you ought to be respectful and stand up and sing when we sing. But Now, let, let's just think about this, friends. This shows you just how much Mr. Adams is consistent in the Bible. He, he says we preach another gospel. He's condemning us for preaching another gospel. So obviously we don't agree with him, but yet he says we ought to be respectful to the gospel he preaches. Now, wait a minute. He's not respectful to the gospel that I preach. He's not respectful to what I preach. Now, why should I give him the courtesy of standing up and singing along with him as if I agreed with his gospel? Because did you stop and think about this, friends? Did you know that the Bible says that when you sing, you're doing some teaching? Notice this, if you would, in Colossians 3 and verse 16, the Bible says that the word of Christ dwells in you richly in all wisdom, teaching... And admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual psalms. See with grace in your heart to the Lord. Well, number one, I'm not going to sing with them because they're not singing properly. They're not singing with grace in their heart to the Lord. They're not singing and making melody in their hearts. They're singing and playing. See, they, they've added to the command. Now, who's really, teach, who's really preaching another gospel here? Who's really preaching another gospel? Now, Aside from the fact that in their sing in their song service, if I had stood up and sang every song with them, you know what I'd be doing? I'd be standing up singing when most of the congregation was sitting down because they had the choir up there doing a little singing. So if I had stood up and sang with them, that'd go. You're being disruptive because now the choir's choir's turn. 
See, friends, the Bible says teaching and admonishing one another. That's this way. When the choir's up there singing to everybody out in the pew, that's not one to another. That's just one group edifying another. That's not the other group edifying back. Now, who's preaching another gospel? See, that's what's in, this is what's in the faith. This is what's in the word of truth. This is what's in the gospel. Who's preaching another gospel? He accuses me of preaching another gospel and then turns around and says that I ought to participate in their song service that I know is contrary to what the gospel preaches. I don't think I'm preaching another gospel. I think it's Mr. Adams preaching another gospel. See? He's preaching another gospel, not me. Not to mention the fact that, again, the Bible says you're teaching... Do you know what some of the songs they sang taught? Now, I don't know what all song books, I don't know what all song books the uh, Baptist churches in this area have in them, but I've been in two Baptist churches and looked at their song books, and I've noticed one song in particular that's just blatant false doctrine. And we have song books that have songs in them that are contrary to Scripture, and we don't sing them. See? We don't sing Have a Little Talk with Jesus. Because the Bible doesn't say you pray to Jesus or talk to Jesus. You talk to the Father. See? We don't sing Jesus coming soon. We don't know when he's coming. See, we don't sing those songs. But there's one song that I've heard twice when I've been in different Baptist churches assembly. And you know what it says? It's victory in Jesus. I don't have a problem with that song. But the verse they sing, and I tried to get I took a picture of it. I couldn't find the picture that I took. But the song says, the song says that, and then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and took away my sin. Now, friends, stop and think about that. Somehow Jesus came and took away my sin. The song that we sing, Victory in Jesus says. I cried, come and heal my broken spirit. I then obeyed the blessed commands. That's what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches Hebrews. Uh, oh, got the verse up there. Sorry about that. Uh, Hebrews 5 and verse 9. He became the author of salvation to all that will obey him. Now, if you don't know how Jesus takes away your sins, friends, you're the one teaching another gospel, not me. My Bible clearly says obedience is what saves you. Salvation through obeying. Not salvation through, I don't know how he got there or how it happens. All right? So, you see, what we're doing, we're examining, we're examining his doctrine, his gospel that he preaches to find out if maybe I should be preaching another gospel. So far... You know, we've only gone about, uh, I don't know, we've probably only gone about 30 seconds into this video clip, and already I see instances where I don't want to be preaching that same gospel. That gospel is contrary to the, the gospel that I know is the Word of God. See? Now, who's, I'm just asking you to think. Think with me. Who's teaching another gospel? Who's preaching another gospel? All right? Now, let's see, all right? Let's continue on. We're welcome to come here, but you know, we're not, you know, you got your tape player going now, but uh, we Yeah, uh, I do. Now, he said we were welcome to come there. All right? Said we were welcome to come there. Okay. Fine, thank you, appreciate it. I'm glad we were welcome to come there because his, his preacher invited us. All right? The guest preacher invited us. So we're welcome to come there, but then he has some kind of problem with the with the camera. I know you do, uh, but you're not welcome <laughs> to come I'm here and, and preach. So, I'm not preaching. No. I'm just going to ask questions. You are welcome to leave right now. Well, I just can't ask questions. That's all. You I, know, I know you don't like to ask questions. Well, you are. Are you preaching another gospel? All right. Now, for some reason, asking question is equal to preaching another gospel. Now, you think about that, friends. The next time you ask, 
your pastor, bishop, rabbi, elder, deacon, holy right, reverend, chief apostle, the next time you ask a question, you're preaching. Now, is that really how shallow his gospel is? That it can't even be asked a question, a simple question, and you be charged with preaching another gospel? Or maybe it's, I couldn't ask a question because I preach another gospel. You know, the folks over at the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Danville, I asked a man about Bible class. He said, well, we take questions as long as it's not different in, in doctrine that we teach. Well, to me, that would just be a, everybody gets to have a, have a turn on talking. A pooling of ignorance. You don't get to ask questions. You don't, get, you don't get to scrutinize what's being taught. You don't get to mingle thought with thought. You don't get to reason together. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine what the country would be like if, if you didn't get to ask anybody a question unless you already agreed with them? Would you send your children to a school? And if the teacher said, now, little Billy, you can ask questions as long as you already agree and you know the answer. Why would I ask the question? Why would I ask the question if I already knew the answer? Why would I ask a question unless I'm trying to, if I, unless I didn't know what the answer was? But Mr. Adams says, we preach another gospel, therefore we can't ask questions. I don't know. You go figure. Who's really preaching, who's really preaching uh, uh, the gospel? And, well, and the Bible says, why don't you have me show what the gospel is that I'm preaching wrong? Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, I and he was that. buried and rose again the third day. I preach that. And you preach if you're not a member of the uh, Church of Christ, you're, you are, you are not, a, not saved. I've heard you. Well, what do and, you, and, well, let me ask you this. Do you believe you have to be a member of the Baptist Church to be saved? No. So why are you in it? Now. Now, friends, this, this is a very important question here. And if you're, if you're reasoning along with us and you're trying to examine, all right, let's see who's really preaching another gospel. I can find the church of Christ in the gospel. I can find the church of Christ in the book that I preach out of, in the word of God, in the faith, in the gospel. I can find the church of Christ. I can find where Jesus said in Matthew 16, 18, upon this rock I will build my church. It belongs to him. I can find that in the Bible. I can find where Paul says the church of Christ salute you. I can find that in the Bible. For the life of me, I cannot find the Baptist church, much less the Grace Baptist church. If I can find the church I'm in, in the gospel, in the faith, who's, who's preaching another gospel if they're in a church that's not in the faith? Now, now think with me, friends. The gospel is the faith. Now, listen to what Paul says. In Romans, uh, Romans 14, verse 23, look at this. Paul says, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Now, he preaches the Baptist church. I know he does because he's in it. But it's not in the faith, which is the gospel, which is the word of God, which is the word of truth, which is the gospel of your salvation, which is the apostles' doctrine, which is the doctrine of Christ. It's not in this book, friends, but he'll preach it. He'll preach it. And Paul says, you preach something that's not in his faith, you preach another gospel. Now that's what Paul said, not me. Who's preaching a different gospel? Who's preaching a different gospel? I can find the church I'm in in the faith. Mr. Adams can't. And when I asked him why he, you know, if he had to be in the church, the Baptist church to be saved, he said no. Well, friends, I know that the church you read about in the Bible is essential to salvation. Why would you be in a church that's not 
in the faith. Uh, guys, go ahead and put the phone lines up. Phone numbers up. Please. So why would you be in that church? Now, listen to his answer. Why, I, I, why would you I, be in a I, church that you don't have to be a part I of? I trust in Jesus Christ. And now, he trusts Jesus Christ. You don't have to be in a Baptist church. You just trust Jesus Christ. Now, you can't find that in the faith either. You can't find just trust Jesus Christ in the faith, in the gospel. Who's preaching another gospel? Who is really preaching another gospel? See, the man who accuses me of preaching another gospel, the, the man who can't find what he preaches in the gospel accuses the man who can find what he preaches in the gospel of preaching another gospel. This man can't show you in the Bible what he preaches and yet he accuses me of preaching a different gospel. I'm not the one preaching a different gospel. You got to work from the Lord. Yes, I was um, calling to ask a question. Okay. Earlier I heard uh, you make the comment about uh, you do not sing a song that talks about Jesus coming back soon. You're right. Uh, I'm just wondering, in Revelation quite a few times, it's mentioned that Jesus says himself that I'm coming soon. So how does that relate to your comment about not singing that those songs? Well, that particular song, I don't remember the exact words uh, in it, but th that particular song says uh, uh, something about uh, the signs coming to pass. And Jesus said, you know, there, you won't know when it's coming. Right, yeah, I agree with that. So, I'm, I'm saying, so just, I mean, I'm not saying there's not some elements. <clears throat> I mean, soon can be a relative term. I mean, if you want to say, you know, 2,000 years has passed since since uh, he, he returned to the Father. So it's sooner now than it was. You know, I, I'll give you that kind of poetic license, you know. Right. I, yeah, I understand, I understand songs, you know, have some poetic license. But the general thrust of that song is is the the imminent coming back of Christ based upon the signs that we're going to see and so forth and that's that's what's contrary to the scripture right. yeah I, like so, I said, you know I what I'm saying I, made it seem like you were yeah it seemed like you were saying that yeah I, I mean I kind of I see yeah. what you're saying but I just think that he is coming soon it, 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 he, Jesus says it in Revelation uh, to to uh, you know John through his uh, Right. His message. So right. I just want to make sure. I'm yeah, I'm just saying. I'm just saying we don't know when he's coming back. Right. You know. So, I mean, if you want to say soon, relatively, like I said, a relative term. No. Okay, that's fine. But, uh, but the general thrust of that song is, uh, you know, I think when you look at all the words and everything, there's not much of that song you could sing, and still be in agreement with the Bible. So, you yeah. know, we just don't sing it. All right. All right, well, hey, one other thing. Oh, okay. I, I'm kind of confused on, uh, with this Church of Christ idea that you, you, you bring up, and I, and I know there's no Baptist church, Episcopal church, any of those kind of churches in Scripture. I, uh, I understand that, but uh, do you think he literally is saying Church of Christ? I mean, there are times where he speaks of the Church of God uh, from Scripture as well. So I'm just curious with... Uh, I mean, just because somebody is from a church of God does not mean that their teaching is correct, even though that's from Scripture. Right. Uh, well, the reason we say Church of Christ is not not because we look at it as a as a moniker or as a name. Mm -hmm. We're simply saying it belongs to Christ, the Church of Christ, the Church that belongs to Christ. I mean, it, it's His. I, I, we don't have to give it a, a brand name. Uh, we're simply referring to it as it's the only one really that exists, that should exist. Uh -huh. And so if we are teaching the gospel, the one faith, then we'll all be a part of the one body, which is the one church. If the, do, you, do, you agree me that the, do you agree with me that the, the, the body of Christ is the church? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So if... If it's the body of Christ, then it's the church of Christ. But it's it's the one that belongs to Him. So 
Uh, uh, yeah, true. I mean, the Bible does talk about it being the church of God or whatever, but notice this. In Acts 20, 28, uh, Paul tells the elders there to feed the church of God, right. which he purchased with his own blood. Well, that was, that was Christ. Right. So uh, what belongs to God belongs to Christ. What belongs to the Father belongs to Christ. But specifically, it belongs to, to Christ because he's the one who died for it. Right. So God is the one that allowed him, you know, to send him, you know, to right. die himself. Whereas the church of God, uh, like for example, I know one of the churches of God is, uh, you know, has a headquarters in Cleveland, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that's not the church in the Bible because the church in the Bible doesn't have a earthly headquarters. Right. You know, so yeah, there's there's a there's a lot of uh, you might say there's some, you know, a lot of religious groups that may have a scriptural name but when you put it all together the, the right name you know doctrine that doesn't contradict the Bible organization and so forth all this you know practice that, that's what uh, th that's what helps you determine this is the church that Christ established right one other thing I, the, and I'm, I'm, I don't if, if I'm taking up too much of your time no that's fine that's you, fine uh, that's fine we're having some good dialogue uh, I just I uh, just one of the questions I've had is I've wondered, you know, with uh, the whole music aspect, I know, uh, let me say this, I'm, I'm from a Christian church, uh, and, you know, I don't, I, I'm sure there are things that, that we do that um, you disagree with or think is, is not biblically sound, but I've often wondered with watching your show, I think you guys do a great job of showing scripture, using scripture to teach, um, but I wonder with the whole music idea, the whole idea with music and um, saying that it's an add-on, it's not, it's not something that's not taught from Scripture, where does the computer come in play to, to project in the background uh, to use teaching? Because everything's worship, regardless of, you know, you know Romans 12, 1, everything we do is, is, is an act of worship. So what you're doing now is an act of worship. No. I can't tell you where... Uh, you know, anything about computers and using okay. that to show let, scripture isn't scripture. Or in, for, or, for, scripture. First, let me let me ask you this. Are you saying everything you do is worship? Everything that we do can be, should be worship. Not every, everything that I do is not worship because I'm I, I'm a sinner. I make mistakes, so okay. I can't worship while... Well, now, there's a difference between service and worship. Would you, I mean, you know what I'm saying? There's a difference between service and worship. Okay. I, I can I can serve God, you know, by by you know live by the life I live, uh -huh. but that's not my that's not worship to Him. Worship worship is is a different uh, a different concept, and in the oh. New Testament in the New Testament we find specific acts of worship that have to be done in a specific way. Now, right. true, there are some acts of worship that you can do uh, 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 away from the first day of the week when we're right. when we're commanded to assemble. All right, I can I can sing when I'm going down the road. Right. But if I'm going to sing, then I'm going to sing like God commanded it. How how would you um, how would you explain Romans twelve one though within that 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 uh, understanding or that thinking that talks about Offering our our bodies as a as a living sacrifice, this you know that is that, our spiritual. Yeah, that action. word, but that word is not that word is not service. I mean, that word is not worship. That word is service. The in 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 the Greek, the word for worship is service. No, no, I'm saying in the I mean, in the King James, it says service. It does not mean worship. Okay, you, you, so the you, King James the King James is the do all say all that? No. I'm, well, I'm saying it's uh, it's the most accurate to uh, to the uh, original language. I don't think that's true. Okay. Well, <laughs> what what, what version do you use that 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 translate this worship? Well, NIV says this is your spiritual act of worship. Yeah. Uh, and 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 uh, I mean, we could we could spend all day on the problems of the NIV. Right. Well, and there's problems with the King James as what well. What I'm saying, but, but not not fatally. I, I think it'd be good for so maybe let's look at the Greek word for that. I mean, okay. I, I, All right. now, uh, I can assure you, it's can not I worship. Look at that. 
I can assure you it's not working. Why right, let me see Okay. All right, well, I, if I find it, I will call you back. And if, even if I'm wrong, I'll call you back. Right. Okay. So you want to you look at it on yeah, your I, own? Yeah, I, I was going to look at it and just see uh, okay. what I can find. I, 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 the word worship it, I know is prosuke, and I'm not... I'm not. I, I can't really recall what this word is, but it's not. It's not the same word as that's translated other places as worship. Okay. Well, I uh, appreciate you, the time. Well, let me. But let me answer your question. Thank you. you yeah. Let me answer your question while you're on the line about about the computer uh -huh. and, and, and and instrumental music. The difference is if I'm if you close your eyes and you listen and you just hear the preaching, mm -hmm. you won't know if I'm using if I'm putting the scripture on the screen. If I've got a chart on the wall, if i am got something written on the chalkboard, it doesn't change. It doesn't change what I'm doing. But if it if changed, we it, if changed, we, it, it changes the way I may take it, but it doesn't. It, it, but, it, but I haven't added to the I haven't added to what the command says. The command says to preach or teach. All right, I haven't changed that. This is this would simply be an expedient to facilitate the command. But if, 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 if God says sing, uh, playing the piano doesn't facilitate singing. You still have to use your voice. All you've done is you've added something with your voice. You see, you see what I'm saying? Uh, if I said... Not, not fully, but I, 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 I mean, I, I don't know if I understand completely that thinking. But, okay. Uh, well, know, but, well how about this? How about this? Can, I mean, are, where, where are you geographically? Geographically, I am located on the couch in my living room. <laughs> okay, and what town are you in? I mean, can we get together sometime and just have a Bible study about these sort of things? I mean, I, I, I don't mind talking to you. I, you know, I, I feel like you present yourself well, and I don't feel like you try to trash everybody, but, I, you know, I don't mind looking at, at whatever with you. So uh, well, I'm in Martinsville. Okay. You, know, you got my number right there probably showing up. Uh, you, you actually, call, I don't. We get together, and I'm, not the, uh, I'm no Bible scholar, uh, but I... I, I like to seek God's word, and I think I learn from God's word. Uh, the more and more I'm, I'm in it, so. Well, can I put can I put you on hold and let somebody take your name and number? Sure, sure. Thanks. Okay. All right. Well, it's good talking to you. <clears throat> I'm going to put you on hold. So so stay on the line, please. All right. All right. Thanks for your call. Good call. Uh -huh. All right. That's a good call. So a lot of times people say, "Now, friends, just think about this." Here's a gentleman called in. We don't agree. We're, we've got some, you know, there's some lot of areas where we're, uh, it's the green one. Oh, it's the top one, three. Uh, <clears throat> uh, we, we don't agree on a lot of things, but we had a good conversation. Now, why is it that he can call and ask me questions, and I can ask him one back, and we, well, and I think about that. Yeah, that's a good point, whatever. But a lot of times people call in, and it's like, man, you know, Katie, bar the door, you've already insulted uh, me and my family for 10 generations. All right? You're on the word from the Lord. Yeah, how you doing, James? I'm doing good. I was just going to make a comment. Uh, how do we know? Uh, I believe that the Church of Christ is the truth, you know. Uh, but, uh, but how do we know all those churches out there that are teaching Earl? How do we know that they're not actually believing in with all their heart that they're teaching the truth. In other words, they're, they're thinking inside that this is the truth. How do we know, how can we read their minds and say that they're not thinking that? Well, that's a, that's a good question. Now, let's, let's think about this way. Is, um, I, I don't doubt their sincerity. That's what we're talking about, right? Right. Sincerity. They, they they sincerely believe that that what they're doing or what they're teaching, what they're preaching, what they're uh, you know uh, everything you know that they, they think that they think that's right. Okay, mm -hmm. right. I, I, that's 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 uh, that's admirable. I don't I don't deny that at all. I don't deny that at all. But notice this in uh, Acts twenty three. Uh, look what Paul says. Paul said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. 
Now, what did Paul, what had Paul done in his previous life before he was a Christian? What had he done? Do you remember some of the things that Paul, Saul had done to Christians? I'm having a little trouble understanding you. It just seemed like okay. a TV and you talking. Is okay, different. all right. I can't understand exactly. That's fine. Say. Look, all right, in Acts 23, verse 1, Paul says, I have lived in all good conscience until this day. But yet, he was a man who was killing Christians. It didn't bother him at all. Right. Now, he was sincere in what he thought he should be doing. He was sincere in thinking, you know, I, need, I just need to kill these folk. I, I sincerely believe that I need to, uh, uh, to uh, kill all these Christians. And Jesus said people think they'll do service to God when they kill you. So they are sincere. Now, are we going to say that Paul or Saul, could he have stayed the way he was and still been all right with God? No. Uh -huh. all right, he was sincere. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, I, I agree that a lot of these people in the in these churches of men, and I say churches of men, not churches of Christ, but there's a lot of people in these churches of men who are sincere, but sincerity doesn't make it right. Right. If, if you went to the doctor, I would think that we would that the that 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 would be complete persuasion. To, to make them believe the actual truth or the right way to go, I don't think that will ever happen. Well, not not to everybody, but I believe that um, uh, I, I believe that uh, the honest hearts, who you know, who are really looking for the truth, that right. they'll that they'll come out of it. Well, they're probably thinking that they have the truth, also, wouldn't you think? Yes, but but truth. But truth doesn't change just because you think it's the truth, right? Well, I mean, they they got the same Bible supposedly as you do. Or maybe some churches or some faiths may have different Bibles, but supposedly they're all using the King, King James Version. But they're probably thinking down deep inside that they have the truth also. I, I'm sure they do. I, and I don't doubt that. That's what I'm saying. I don't doubt their sincerity. But, right. but, but you, you, have to, you have to go with the facts. Here's another verse, Acts 26, verse 9. Right. Paul said, I thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Now, he, he thought he should do these things, but he was wrong. And sincerity just, you know, sincerity only goes so far. If you went to the doctor and the doctor says, uh, what you need to do to get better is you need to take some rat poison. And you say, no, doc, that'll kill me. And the doc says, no, I sincerely believe it'll make you get better. Right. He, he's still wrong, you know. He can be sincere about it all day long, but he's still wrong. And that's what we're talking about. I mean, just because someone's sincere doesn't, doesn't mean they're okay. They still need to look for the truth and find out if they're all right, you know. Right. Examine right. themselves. That's what, and that's what we're talking about. All right. Thank you, James. So, all right. Good talking to you. You want to work from the Lord? Oh, hello. Hello. What are you doing? You want to work from the Lord? Uh, Turn your TV it. down. It's rough there on my TV. Do you believe in all that crap that you're talking about? If I, if I didn't no. believe it, I wouldn't say it. All right. Uh, you know, we, we was... We was, uh, I thought we was going to go three for three here. We were, we were two, two for two there. Uh, yes, sir, I believe it. I believe it. And uh, I suspect that if your faith was examined, that it wouldn't be uh, uh, worth much more than a, a plug nickel. You know, apparently you're not looking for the truth. You're not sincere like the previous caller was talking about. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you want to call in, let's have some, some uh, uh, serious dialogue here, if you will. You're on the word from the Lord. Turn your TV down, please. Um, hello? Hello, you're on the air. Oh, okay. Um, is the Holy Spirit in you? Dwelling Bacon, in you? Bacon, are we going to go over this again? The Holy Spirit is dwelling in me through the word. I just had Colossians 3.16 up. Romans chapter 8. 
verse 9, it says, For you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Okay. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. How, how does he dwell, Macon? That's, that's the same question that we ask you every time you call. How does the Holy Spirit dwell in you? There's nothing in the Bible that says the Holy Spirit dwells in you through the Word. It does how, do, say that. how does He dwell in you? Well, you tell what? me how He dwells in you. Because every time, every time I read in the Bible about the Holy Spirit making, He's doing some miraculous gift. So, if you, if the Holy Spirit is dwelling in you, what miracle are you going to do to prove that? Because I can find that Christ is dwelling in me, but it's the Word. Let the Word of Christ dwell in you. Can you prove that the Spirit of Christ, Christ dwells in you through the Word, James? <clears throat> in Romans nine, the verse you just, I'm in Romans eight, the verse you just uh, quoted. The Spirit bears witness with my spirit. Now, how does the Spirit bear witness? How does the Spirit bear witness about your spirit? Or with your spirit. That sounds like a personal thing, you know. That, that, that's something between you and the Holy Spirit, no. not between no. you and everyone else. No, the Holy Spirit bears witness through the Word. He testifies with the Scripture. He testifies with the Word. And if His testimony agrees with your testimony, in other words, a person, I'm not saying you personally, but I'm saying a person. If a person says, yeah, I'm a child of God, then the Holy Spirit is going to bear witness through the Word. This is his, this is his court transcript. This is his uh, certified transcript. He's going to bear witness with the, with the person. And if the uh, testimony agrees, then yes, you're a child of God. She's like a court of law. But if it doesn't agree, you're not a child of God. This is what the, the Spirit says. This is how the Spirit bears witness with my spirit that I'm a child of God. I don't have to have the Spirit dwelling in me literally in order to be a child of God. I have to have the Spirit verifying that I'm a child of God based upon the fact that I've done what the Spirit said do in order to be a child of God. That is exactly what that verse says in Romans 8, verse 9. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And in, and in right before that, in the sentence right before it, it says, The Spirit of God dwell in you. It doesn't say anything about through the Word or... Are you sure? In that verse, no. What about, what about Galatians 3, 2? Paul said, Receive you the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. How did they receive the Spirit? Is by hearing of faith. Now there's it in faith the word? I, I still don't understand what what you I, I know I know what you're referring to in Romans where it talks about the Spirit beareth witness with our okay. spirit that we are God's okay. children. Is that what is that's that's the verse you're referring to right before? Romans eight. 15 and 16. That's, that's the verse I was talking about before. But you said, you, you said, find the verse that says the Spirit is connected with the Word. Here it is, right here. Romans 8, 15 and 16? No, Galatians 3, 2. Receive the Spirit of the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Let me, let me faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of, word of God. Romans 10, 17. And Paul says, how did you receive the Spirit? Had to be by the Galatians, hand. Galatians 3, verse 2. Right? Galatians 3, 2. This only would I learn of you, receive ye the Spirit of, no, receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Is that what you're talking about? Mm-hmm. He's asking them, how did you receive the Spirit? By the works of the law, the Old Testament, or by the hearing of faith. So how, I'd ask you, I could ask you the same thing. How did you get? The, how did you receive the, the Spirit? 
By being baptized for the remission of sin? By the hearing of faith. That's how you receive the Spirit. But it's not literally making. That's, and that's the point we're getting at. See, what, 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 what I don't understand making is why you're so adamant about having the Spirit if you know you're not going to have miraculous gifts. Because everywhere you find the Spirit actually being in somebody, working through somebody, there, there's a miracle being done. Are you saying that if, if, if a person says they have the Holy Spirit, then they have to have one of the miraculous no, gifts that I'm saying, in 1 I'm saying, chapter 12, right? I'm saying if you, if you, if you don't tell how, if you say that it's some way other than through the Word, then I'm going to say, let's demonstrate it. If, so, if, what? if you have the Spirit in some other way than through the Word, I'm going to say, demonstrate that you have the Spirit. That's what I'm saying. I get the Holy Spirit through the Word of God by obeying the Word of God. And the Word of God says you get the Holy Spirit when you're All baptized right. for the remission of sins. All right. So, but, but you're saying He dwells in you separate and apart from the Word. No, I, I'm not saying that. That's what, that's what you're saying. That's not what I'm saying. Well, then what are you I never saying? Said that. Then what does the Holy Spirit do in your life that He doesn't do through the Word, Macon? That's, what, that's my point. Because I can show you that everything the Bible says the Spirit does for you, the Word does for you. And I've actually showed you that in Bible studies before. You, you but I'll be glad to show it to you again. You don't get the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control, through the word, words written down on a piece of paper. It's through... God's Holy Spirit. And Macon, I'm telling you that the Spirit operates through the Word. This is His tool. And everything the Holy Spirit is said to do for you, the Word does as well. So if you want to say the Holy Spirit operates through the Word, I don't have a problem with it. But if you want to say, I read the Scripture and then I get this something inside of me indwelling, then I've got a problem with it. Because that's contrary to what the Bible says. The Bible says when someone had the Holy Spirit actually dwelling in them, they did miracles. And you can't do a miracle. You don't have any miracles. You don't have any works that demonstrate. So either, number one, you don't have the Spirit dwelling in you, like separate from the Word, or He's only dwelling in you through the Word. Now, if you want me to bring you those scriptures that I've showed you before, I'll be glad to do it. I'll print them off and bring them to you. But the Spirit does not operate separate and apart from the Word of God. I never said it did. Okay. And I'm saying He's not an it. He's a He. He's, he's not what? You're saying, you're saying the Spirit it, and I'm saying He is a He. But I'm just saying, Macon, that if you, are you saying that he, that you have the Holy Spirit separate from the Word? In other words, he is doing something in your life apart from the Word, separate and apart from the Word, in addition to the Word. Maybe, he's, maybe the Word of God. Oh, no, no. It's, it's in coordination with the Word of God. It's, okay. Then, in, in then, fact, it, the, the, uh, then it sounds like to me that we're on the same page then. That's what I say. In accordance with the Word, He operates through the Word. The Bible clearly teaches that the Holy Spirit indwells us. And I'm saying through the Word. And it does and you not just, you just say admit it that through it the indwells word. us through the Word. It doesn't I'm say but Macon, I, but Macon, I can show you that everywhere the Holy Spirit is said to do something, the Word does the same thing. The Holy Spirit teaches, the Word teaches. The Holy Spirit comforts, the Word comforts. You see? It, 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 I'm saying this is how, this is the tool by which the Holy Spirit works today. 
And if the Holy Spirit is dwelling in you, then he's doing so through the word. Not in addition to or separate and apart from the word. Not that way. Because you wouldn't even know about the Holy Spirit except the word told you. That's all I'm saying. Well, uh, you know, I can't figure out whether this is a semantic problem or, or I don't really think it's a semantic problem. I, I really believe if from talking to you guys and I've talked to uh, several of you about it that, you know, that I don't believe you have the Holy Spirit at all in any way, shape, or form through the Word, now, not through the now Word. how do you make that judgment? Indwelling you, not indwelling you. I don't think you guys have the Holy how, Spirit. How do you make that judgment? How do you make that judgment? Prove to me that you have the Holy Spirit in how you in you any way. How do you make that judgment, Macon? What? How do you make that determination that we don't have the Holy Spirit well, through the Word? Prove, prove to me that you have the Holy Spirit in any way, shape, or form. And I... I've asked you to do the same thing. So you prove to me first. You're the one who claims that you have the Holy Spirit in some, I don't know. At first, the first time we talked, it was supernatural. But I think you've come off of that. But I'm saying, why don't you demonstrate it? Tell me how you have the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, I have it through the Word. I do what the Word says. Therefore, I'm walking in the Spirit. I'm guided by the Spirit. Through His Word. Now, if you can't—I mean, if you can't see by our fruits, you know, then I—I I, I don't have anything else to offer you except by except by our fruits. Now, Anybody what, can preach the Bible. That doesn't prove that you have the Holy Spirit. Well, pr prove that you have it, then, Macon. But I—but I can, t I, you know. I'm just saying. What? I'm just saying, you, you claim to have the Holy Spirit in addition to, it sounds to me like, in addition to the Word. And I'm saying, won't you demonstrate it? You demonstrate the greater. You, 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 simply, you seem to have the Holy Spirit in, uh, uh, what, greater measure than we do. So why don't you demonstrate the greater and we'll demonstrate the lesser. Okay, how, how am I supposed to do that? How am I supposed to demonstrate that? I don't know. You're the one that's got the Holy Spirit separate from the Word. Well, why, why, why can't you prove that you have the Holy Spirit? How come? Why don't you prove it? I don't have I don't have the Holy Spirit as great as you do. Apparently, I'm saying if you demonstrate the greater, then I'll demonstrate the lesser. And I'm saying you can know that I have the Spirit by by my fruits. By the fruits you shall know them. Now, that, that's the best I can offer you. Well, one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit is love. And, uh, and, and one thing that you guys have definitely failed to do is love me. Uh, that's I don't, sure. Now, Macon, now how, do you make that, how do you make that determination? Because every time I get around you guys, you basically you tell me to get lost. No, we don't. You came to, Macon, you came, you came to the tent meeting in Mayadan. And you stood outside and you said, I didn't think I'd be welcome here. And I said, why did you think that? Now, just because, just because our brethren might come up and talk to you about your, your peculiar belief, does that mean that we don't love you? But I can tell you this, Macon, if you're holding that position, if you're holding that position that is contrary to what the Bible says, then... It's, it's going to be like we're, going to, we're not going to be walking together very long because we're not in agreement. But I don't believe anyone has ever mistreated you, Macon. So, you know, cite a time when you've been mistreated. Has anyone really told you to get lost? Have they used those words, get lost? No, I'm just okay. using that as a figure of speech. Just, okay. I'm, telling, I'm just saying that whenever I come around you guys, you just basically say, well, we don't agree with what you're saying about the Holy Spirit, so, you know, and then you just, you know, don't have anything to do with me, basically. Well, Macon, I'm just saying, when you, when you can demonstrate your doctrine from the Bible, then we can come together. But until then, we're showing you Bible, and all we get from you is... No, that's not right. Okay. What are we supposed to do? 
I mean, I, I don't know what else we're supposed to do. If we if we can't if we can't come to agreement, you know, walk together, then we're not going to be agreed. But I am glad that you that you backed off the miraculous, you know, miraculous indwelling. At least I think you have. Well, I don't think I ever believed that I had a miraculous gift. I thought maybe I might. I, I, I don't really have any deep convictions about the miraculous gifts. I'm trying to do that, but it, it, it's just not coming together. You know, it's just I'm, I'm having a hard time doing that. But I don't really believe in the miraculous gifts today. But okay. uh, I don't believe that just because a person has the Holy Spirit, then that means that they have a miraculous gift. If the Bible perfectly makes it clear that if you have the Holy Spirit, you have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control, uh, you know, and uh, I don't see a lot of that in you guys. Well, Macon, I don't see I don't see some of those things in you. Now, isn't that fair? You don't see any of those fruits in me. Okay, then you don't have the Holy Spirit then. You say you don't see any of the fruits of the Holy Spirit in me. Is that correct? Oh, I thought you were making a statement. I thought you were saying that I didn't. I thought you were making an observation about yourself. You know, but I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, do you, I mean, are you self-control? Are you are you temperate? I see a lot of you know. I I see people, you know, every day. That for the most part are good people, but you know they may have lack a little self-control, or they may not possess this particular fruit of the Spirit like they should, does that mean that they're not a Christian? No. I mean, the Bible talks about you have to add these virtues to your to your life. But my point making is, if you're saying, I mean, if you're waiting to see the person who has all these things in their lives perfectly and completely, then you're going to be looking a long time. And I think you can't even say that about yourself. Can you say that you have love, love joy, peace, uh, gentleness and kindness and all that in your life? Uh, uh, yeah, I think I have. Well, I mean, without thinking about each single one of them, yeah, I, I think I have at least some of all of them, yeah. Well, so why, why then, why, I don't understand why you, why you are so harsh to criticize us, but yet... If we even start looking at you, it's like, well, y'all don't, y'all don't even like me. I, I don't. Have I, just, any I mean, I don't understand that. looking at me, yeah. but I do have a problem when I come out to your services and then you treat me like an infidel. I don't. Do have a problem? Megan, I don't think you've ever been treated that way. You don't think you treat no, me that no, way? No, I don't. I think you're wrong on this doctrine. I think Johnny does. You may not, but I know well, Johnny does. But I'm saying you're making these accusations against all the brethren, and I'm saying it comes down to you. You're the one. You're the one who is on the outside with this with this doctrine that you can't substantiate with the Bible, and yet you're scr uh, criticizing us because we won't accept you with this doctrine that's outside the Bible. Now, why is that? Why is that wrong for us? You know, I'm honestly listening to what you all have to say about it. And I'm, I appreciate and, that. And I sincerely believe you're teaching false doctrine Okay. about that. If, if we're teaching false doctrine, then why would you want to be a part of us then? I'm trying see to help I'm you to understand what is the truth about it. Okay. Well, I'm not, trying, I'm not telling you to get out of here, Macon, but, I, but you have been on the phone for 19 minutes. I, we've been talking 19 minutes. So All right, can, can I take another call? No, you're not. You're not mad at me, are you? No, I'm fine. Okay. You? Okay. Okay. I just want to get another call in. All right. All right. All right. You're on the word from the Lord. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, seems like to me that you are a little bit confused about the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit. That I'm confused by the Holy Spirit? Yes. The doctrine of the Holy Spirit. Okay, I, I don't think so. The doctrine of the Holy Spirit. Okay, I don't think so, but go ahead and state why. Why do you think that? 
everybody, the Bible says, what did Jesus say he was going to do? He was going to baptize the people with the Holy Spirit. He didn't say he was going to baptize people with the Holy Spirit. He, he specified who was going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. No. John, John the Baptist witnessed that he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Okay. And then Jesus specified who he was going to baptize. John made a statement. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit, but only a specific group of people were, be, were going to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. Acts 1. The, the Holy Spirit is a gift to all who believe. Acts 1, 5, 1, 8. All right, here it is, Acts 1, 8. But ye shall receive power for that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Now who's he talking to? Who's he talking to? To those who believe the word. Now that's not who he's talking to. Look at the context. Who's he talking to? Go talking back. To the Jews. No, no. The no. church. No. Those, no. So those in the upper, upper in the upper room. That's who we're talking to. No. In the upper room. Nope. Upper room. Nope. Look again. Look at this. In in verse twenty five, Acts Acts one twenty five. I'm sorry. Uh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm I'll sorry. get it right there. It's, it's, it's the apostles. Look right here. And where was that? An upper room. No. And he had given command to the apostles whom he had chosen to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion. All right. Look. The apostles. The apostles whom he had chosen. Whom? That's the apostles. And the Okay. In also, show yourself alive. In back, in Acts two, who received the Holy Spirit? The apostles. Who received the apostles? Who received the Holy Spirit? The apostles. By the different different kindreds and tongues. The apostles. Look at this, Acts one twenty five. Peter is talking to the apostles, and he says, "Judas fell. Yeah. Judas fell, and they cast forth their lots." And the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. And then, chapter 2, verse 1, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all one accord in one place. That's just the apostles. I mean, it, it follows right. the very next verse. It's the apostles. Not, not the 120. Look. Look at verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. I don't have a problem with that. But you can't find the 120 there. That, it's the apostles that were there in that upper, uh, that were there on the day of Pentecost. Look, look, look at verse 5, 6, and 7. And they were dwelling... 5, 6, 7, they're not, they're five, six, seven, they're not apostles. They're no ordinary people who believe. These are the men who are hearing the apostles, sir. And they still have the Holy Spirit. No. No. And the Holy Spirit came upon them. Not on these people. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this noise, this was noised abroad, the multitude came together okay. and were confounded. These are the people that are listening to the apostles. You, you with me? And because notice, these devout Jews that came together, they said... We had every man speaking his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? So the, who were speaking? Not all men out of every nation, but just Galileans. And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? All right. In Acts, all right, in Acts, 10, in Acts chapter 10, verse 44, Gentiles received the Holy Spirit, not your apostles. Okay. Gentiles received the Holy Spirit, not the apostles. Okay. So besides the apostles, the Holy Spirit came on other people too. All right, but look at this. This is this is Cornelius, Gentiles, right? Now, you have, you have to follow with me. Is, is this commonplace? In Acts ten, is that something that happened every every time someone obeyed the gospel? Oh, well, you said, well, you made the statement. You you. I, I know what. I, 
you made a statement that the Holy Spirit came on the apostle only. In the beginning, but look at this. But it came on as a Gentile. But look, but look, sir, this is the only time when the Holy Spirit was poured out upon the Gentiles, everybody else had to have their hands laid on them. And here's the reason why. Look at this. In Acts 11, when Peter is giving an account of this right here. But my point is, but my point is that the Holy Spirit came not only on the apostle, but also came on the Gentiles. That's all I'm the, saying. This is the exception to the rule about laying on of hands. All other Jews and all of the Gentiles had to have an apostle lay hands on people in order to receive the Holy Spirit. This is the only exception. And that's why Peter says in Acts 11, verse 15, he says, And as I begin to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on, on them as on us at the beginning. Now, why didn't Jesus baptize everybody else with the Holy Spirit? Why did he only baptize the, the apostles and Cornelius? He was baptized more than the Cornelius. Anybody that confessed that Jesus died and rose the third day. No, because everybody else who had the Holy Spirit, sir, everybody else who, got the, who, who received the Holy Spirit had to have hands everybody laid on the Holy them. Everybody believed that. Sir? Not necessarily, because Luke, Luke chapter 11 said, God said, just ask, and he'll give you the Holy Spirit. God said, just ask, and he'll give you the Holy Spirit. Just ask. But, without laying no hands or nothing, just ask. Luke so, so, so why don't you demonstrate the Holy Spirit then? Who said I haven't demonstrated the Holy Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit is <laughs> demonstrated by those nine miraculous, one of those nine miraculous gifts in, in 1 Corinthians 12. You just made a statement that Wait a minute, let's stay, let's stay, stay on the subject. You said that you have to have somebody lay their hands on you to receive the Holy Spirit. I said an apostle. But the Bible, the New Testament says, just ask God and you shall receive the Holy Spirit. And who's he talking to? Without laying no hands. Who's he talking to? He's talking to everybody. Who was, no, he was talking to his apostles. See, you, you're, put, you're taking all these things out of context. Look at this. The body, the body. Sir. Okay. In Acts, Acts eleven fifteen, Peter says that Cornelius and he, and those with Cornelius, they received the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit fell on them as on us at the beginning. Now, if this was so commonplace, if this was so customary for the Holy Spirit to fall upon people, and in order to give them the uh, miraculous gifts, then why? does Peter have to go back all these years to the day of Pentecost to say it happened just like it did on us at the beginning? Why didn't he say it fell on them just like it did on us at Thessalonica or somewhere? Why does he have to go all the way back to, to the day of Pentecost? But God is no respect of a person. No, it's because this was so unusual. It didn't happen every blue moon. And... and and friend, they were they were obey, people were obeying the gospel by thousands. Daily they were obeying the gospel, and yet nobody received the Holy Spirit this way except Cornelius. And you know why? You know why Cornelius received the gift of the Holy Spirit? Because watch this. Do you know what the purpose of of, of speaking in tongues is? The purpose of tongues. To edify, to exhort, and no, it's for a sign. Tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. On the day of Pentecost in Acts two, who did not believe? It was the it was the Jews, right? The ones who were listening. So the speaking in tongues was a sign for them that believe not. In Acts chapter ten, Acts chapter ten, who was it that didn't believe? Who was it that didn't believe in Acts 10? No. You with me? Yeah, I'm listening. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you time to talk. Okay. 
in Acts 10, here's who didn't believe. And they of the circumcision, which, be, which believed, as they were already Christians, were astonished as many as came with Peter, and there were six of them, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out to give the Holy Ghost. Now, the Jews didn't believe that the Gentiles should be recipients of the gospel. But the Holy Spirit was poured out upon them, on the Gentiles, and it caused these non-believers, that is, they didn't believe that the Gentiles should be saved, they believed. They, they accepted, oh, the Gentiles get the same gospel. So the speaking in tongues was a sign for the Jews that the Gentiles should be taught the gospel. Peter didn't even want to go. Peter gets to Cornelius' house and says, it's not even lawful for me to be here. God had to show me a, a, a big sheet coming out of heaven saying that, you know, what God's made clean, don't call unclean what God says is clean. They, were, they had a hard time believing that Gentiles should be obedient to the gospel. So how do you convince non-believers? You have to speak in tongues because tongues are for a sign to them that believe not. But Cornelius and the apostles are the only instances where you find the Holy Spirit being poured out upon someone and they doing miraculous gifts. And that's, that's important, that they always do miraculous gifts. Now, if the Holy Spirit's been poured out upon you, like Cornelius, then I want to, I want to see the miraculous gifts because that's what Cornelius did. Who, who said you can't see it? Who said you can't see the miraculous gifts? Well, do you speak in tongues? Yes, I do. What tongues do you speak in? My what, heavenly tongue. What language? It might be a Hebraic language. Hebraic. It might be? You don't know? you got to ask for an interpretation. So you have an interpreter in your church? Uh-huh. I don't believe, I don't believe uh, I'm not a, a, a non-denominational church. I don't believe in non-denomination. I don't either. It's man, that's man's made. That's right. So where do you assemble? Where do you speak in tongues? I speak. I speak in my prayer language. I don't speak. In, I don't speak in the church. I speak in my prayer language. Now, where's prayer language in the Bible? Where's prayer language in the Bible? Romans chapter eight. Okay. So, do you edify then when you, with your tongue? Because Paul. Because Paul said. If you don't have an interpreter, you need to be quiet. He said, when you come together... The Bible says pray in the Spirit. But, the, but Paul said also, when you come together, and every one of you have a psalm, have a doctrine, have a tongue, have the revelation, have the interpretation, let all things be done to edify. So if no one understands you, who's edified? And if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church. There's a ministry of tongues, there's, there's a ministry of tongues, and there's a prayer of tongues. But Paul says it has to be for edifying. All right. The ministry of tongues, look, the ministry, the ministry of tongues will, will be, consist of a word of wisdom and a word of knowledge. Okay. But I'm saying, if it's, if it's a the word, tongue. That's the ministry of tongues. No. No, I'm talking about a tongue is a language, though. A tongue is a language, a spoken language that you just didn't study, but you just learned it. Not the language you were born in, Acts 2. I understand that. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you on that. Okay. It's an unknown tongue, something that you was not born with. Okay. But I'm saying, if you don't, do you have an interpreter whenever you speak in that tongue? All you, have to, all you have to do is ask God to give you an interpretation no, of himself, and no, he'll give it to you. No, because cause, cause you, don't, you don't get to make your own interpretation. He says, Paul said, if any man is speaking an uh, unknown you tongue. Your, the Holy Spirit will give you an interpretation, no, not you yourself. You, you, don't, you, don't get, you don't get to speak in tongue and then give the own interpretation. 
Paul said, if any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at the most by three, and that by course, in other words, you take turns, service. and let one interpret. That is in church service. I am not talking about prayer language. I'm, that is church service. I'm not talking about prayer language. So who's edified in the prayer language? Myself. Do you, uh, do you, understand, the, do you understand the language? Church. Yes. What language is it? It's Hebrew. So you speak Hebrew? The tongue that I was not born with. You speak right. Hebrew? In, in the spirit. You can read Hebrew? I, oh, I can read Hebrew. Yes. You can read Hebrew? That's the, that's that but you do that miraculously. Is what I'm asking. You you've never studied Hebrew? Well, I study Hebrew. Well, then, you, then it's not a then it's, then it's not an unknown tongue to you. I study Hebrew and Greek, but my prayer language is in Hebrew, Hebraic. But it's but it's not an unknown tongue to you then. An unknown tongue is a tongue you didn't study. No, I did not study this. What well, you, either you studied or you didn't study. You said you I did had, study. Listen, listen. I spoke in Hebraic language first. I spoke in Hebraic language first. Then it was revealed unto me by the Hebrew language. So you spoke in Hebrew language first, but you didn't know it. I didn't know what I was speaking in. Then when I started studying Hebrew, I learned what I was speaking in. Sir, come on. You really expect us to believe that you spoke in a, in a language you didn't know, and you and you didn't even know what it was, and now you're studying it. And, and therefore you can read it? Because I asked the Spirit to give me the interpretation. And, and so what did you say? And I got what a, uh, I got what a rock, rabbi priest. But sir, in the Bible, Paul says, let another interpret. Now that's the rules that we have for interpretation. In the church, it says in church service, you're getting, you're getting mixed up. You're getting, you're getting, I'm not getting mixed up. I understand the rules that apply. When you're speaking in tongues, you have to have another interpreter because God wouldn't give you the interpretation of a tongue. Why didn't, he just, why didn't he just talk to you in English? What's so great about an, a, a, a language that you didn't know? The reason why you're not understanding what I'm saying? The reason you're not understanding? No, I'm, the reason I'm not understanding is because you're contra contradicting Scripture here. I I've already read you this verse right here, sir. Verse 22, uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 22. Tongues are edified to them that do not believe. They're a sign for them that do not believe. Now, why do you speak in tongues if you're a believer? In my prayer language, I speak in tongues. Why do you speak in tongues? Tongues are a sign... Not for them that believe, but to them that believe not. So do you not believe? Are you a believer or not a believer? I'm a believer. Then why do you have tongues? Why do you speak in tongues? If you're the only one listening to it. I'm not the only one that do it. I, I, I said the only one listening to it. You said in your prayer language. And I'm assuming that means you're, when you're at home. Or by I mean, yourself. I'm by myself. I pray in the Spirit. So... But praying in the Spirit doesn't mean you have to pray with an unknown tongue. Then I'm praying in tongues. I, I, pray, I pray with the Spirit. You know, I, I pray, but I don't have to know an unknown language to pray. What edifying does it give you? It builds me up. It builds me and it taught me. Even though, even though you just said you're a believer and Paul said tongues are for unbelievers. See what I'm saying? Your belief is contradicting the scripture right here. I've got about, sir, I've got about five minutes and I'd like to take another phone call. All right. All right, thank you. Sorry. You're on the word of the Lord. Hello? You're on, you're on the air? Yeah. Yes, I am. Oh, I, I, I try to study my Bible. I don't read real well. 
and they can. Turn your TV down just a little bit, ma'am. Okay, wait a minute. And <laughs> they said that they made, this person is trying to tell me they made Adam and Eve. But where did the other people come from? Well, <clears throat> they came from Adam and Eve. That <clears throat> they came from Adam and Eve. Is that does that work? Is that is that an answer? Yeah, well, they try to tell me because they come from monkeys. Well, <clears throat> no. Uh, <laughs> I know about I, them, I think you know. I think only monkeys make up that. That, uh, I, I think even a monkey wouldn't agree with that. I don't think I don't think monkeys would claim most of the people that claim they came from monkeys. Uh, in in Genesis three verse twenty. Let me just put this up here for you. All right. Genesis three and verse twenty. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Everybody, everybody came from came from Eve. Okay, so she had sons, right? Mm-hmm. Sons and daughters. Sons and daughters, uh -huh. and they just made it. Right. Back back then, I mean, if there was only two people. Right. That's what Big I'm gene pool. Oh. You know how people how people can look? Uh, they can be in the same family and look totally different. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you, you might just think about that. All the different characteristics that you see in people. Hair color, eye color, skin color. Yeah. High, okay. short, whatever. Because uh they they see they trying to break my belief and I, I and I'm a holiness and I believe in it thoroughly. Who, who's telling you this? Uh supposed to have been a uh, acquaintance. Okay. And uh so I got an answer for him now. Well Because I didn't kinda understand that myself. Right. But now, you know. Well, come, come visit us at at uh, on the boulevard. Are you in Eden? No, I, no, I'm in uh, Danville. Danville. Well, go visit the folks over at American Legion, 120 American Legion. Oh, I, I go to Church of God. Well, you can go and visit with them and study the Bible with them. Well, what are y'all? We're members of the Lord's Church, the Church of Christ. Oh, and here's why I say here's why I say you you uh, you should go examine what we teach because uh -huh. now now watch it I'm not trying to insult you but watch this you didn't go to your preacher to answer your question no because I'm ashamed that well but be. I'm saying but I'm saying we're not ashamed for you to ask us and we're not ashamed to give an answer so you, I mean if yeah, you trust but us I, mean, a, I, I know I mean you know my mama goes there and all she'd be well. She, she just passed and all. Right. And, uh... Well, but, you know, it, it's kind of like... And I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, but it's well, kind of like... Okay. It's, it's kind of like we don't say, you know, if, like my mom used to say, if all your friends jumped off a cliff, would you too? No. Nope. You know, I want to do something because it's the right thing to do, not necessarily because everybody else is doing it. And if you if you trust us to give you a good answer, a Bible answer, on on this, on this an, uh, subject, uh... We, you might find we give you some good Bible answers on other subjects too. Go, they they have Bible study on Tuesday night. Okay. If, if you don't want if you don't want to go on Sunday, go on Tuesday night and, and study with them. Okay. Y'all always on this channel. We're on this channel on Sunday night at eight thirty. Uh, Wednesday morning, from eleven in the morning till one in the afternoon. Eleven to one. On Wednesday morning, 11 to 1 on Thursday morning, uh, Thursday night, tonight from 8 okay, until 10. And uh And just all, kind, all kinds of Bible teaching going on. That, that first fella you had on had me totally laughing. Well, we, uh, sometimes we do get a little comic relief, but uh, we, try to, we try to stick with the Bible. Okay? And I am. I, I'm getting a wrap up soon. I got to go. Right, I appreciate your call. Good talking to you. All right, friends. Sorry we're out of time. But uh, let me just want to say this about uh, 
what Mr. Adams said about me. Remember he said, I, I, I preach a different gospel? But friends, I find what I'm preaching in the Bible, and uh, he can't find what he's preaching in the Bible, so therefore you be the judge about who's really uh, preaching another gospel. I want to get back to uh, uh, our, our, our information. If you're in uh, Eden, here's where you can uh, meet with us, study the Bible together. Remember the tent meetings in Danville and Eden. Be watching for flyers on your door, advertisements on television. Till next time, friends, always remember to ask, what does the Bible say? You always get a word from the Lord. Have a good night. Are you going to church only to find a club? Are you tired of looking for the Bible but only getting Babel? If you want to find people who are studying God's Word, come examine the Church of Christ. We're meeting right here at 250 the Boulevard in downtown Eden. If you want to hear more plain Bible teaching, watch A Word from the Lord Thursday night.